Ready? One more time. Then we'll get it right. <laughs> One more time. Okay, here we go. This is Hannah, and this is her dad, Hans. This is Ethan, and this is his sister, Sarah. That's his nephew, Ezekiel. This is Andrew, and that's his wife, Eileen. What do Hannah, Ethan, and Andrew all have in common? Hannah has type 1 diabetes. I've had type 1 diabetes for a little over a decade now. I've had type 1 diabetes for the past... 36 years or so. I've had it since I was a junior in high school. With type 1 diabetes, the pancreas doesn't produce insulin that helps regulate uh, blood glucose. Um, type 1 diabetes has nothing to do with, uh, with diet or lifestyle. It's, uh, unfortunately, it's, um, you know, it's, it's a form of uh, organ failure. Type 1 diabetes is very dangerous, especially when it's not monitored properly. One morning, I had very low blood sugar. I didn't treat it fast enough, uh, and I actually had a seizure. I dislocated one of my shoulders, woke up on the ground in a stretcher, uh, in this weird outline of sugar, um, which is because my mom had been uh, putting sugar, sugar in my mouth and giving me a, what's called a glucagon injection. That was something that was, um, I wasn't home at the time, I know it was really um, scary for my mom and it was scary for me to hear about. I was so grateful that he was okay and again hopefully it won't ever happen again because... Monitoring type 1 diabetes is very important. It's also very difficult to do. Managing type 1 diabetes uh, requires a relentless juggling act. It's a 24-7 task to regulate uh, uh, her blood glucose. Uh, every day there is a regimen of uh, meal planning, carb counting, um, you know, testing her blood, uh, injections. We have uh, changing pumps, changing, changing monitors. Thank you, changing pumps, changing monitors. You know, one way that uh, that I think of it is is we're really um, you know managing it in five ten minute intervals at a time. I remember the first time like we met that. Um, this noise, this sound went off, and I'm thinking, "Oh, is that your cell phone?" And you were like, "No, that's my pump." Monitoring and controlling type one diabetes also requires a lot of equipment. Hannah will explain. This is my tester kit. This is my insulin kit. This is glucagon for if I get really, 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 really low. This is my ketone tester for breaking the sharp bit off of the. Syringe. That's everything? Mm-hmm. This is Mark fisher Colbury. He's the JDRF International Board of Directors Chairman. Yeah, I'm Chairman of the Board of the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, the largest funder of diabetes research in the globe. He knows a lot about type 1 diabetes. The fastest growing age group for diagnosis are kids in the 0 to 5 category. Today there's over 1 in 300 school kids in the U.S. who have type 1 diabetes. 1 in 120 now school kids in Finland. Uh, rates are increasing substantially in Japan, China, India, and in many populations around the globe and nobody understands why. No one understands what the cause of this disease is but it is now one of the most common chronic childhood illnesses even though it could be diagnosed at any age. JDRF needs a lot of money to help fight type 1 diabetes. So there's a long list of advances that the, the research community has uh, created uh, that we want to foster uh, with the additional funding that we can obtain. 50 human clinical trials funding research in 17 countries, stem cells, encapsulation, smart insulin, the artificial pancreas. Our mission is to prevent, treat, and cure type 1 diabetes. Right now there isn't a cure, but a cure is possible.